What if I told you that there's a sorcerer with such an insane domain expansion that it could make him totally invincible? He even has the potential to surpass the likes of Gojo and Yuta. There's also Utahime, a semi-grade 1 sorcerer who can actually buff others' abilities up to 200%. And there's a character who almost had a Demon Slayer crossover and wielded Tanjiro's katana. I'm gonna break down all 83 sorcerers by each grade to finally reveal the strongest once and for all. Let's start with this old guy who worked for the Kamo family, Shino. Even though his abilities weren't shown, he might have served as a sorcerer for the Kamo family because the big three clan usually have servant families, like the Hei of the Zenin clan. Despite his age, he continued to serve the Kamo family. Grandpa clearly don't know retirement. Like, look at that hair. There are even stronger sorcerers in the clan with the insane ability of blood manipulation. The crazy thing is, some sorcerers outside this conservative clan can wield the technique, even though it's exclusive to one of the big three families. And I'm going to explain all of them shortly. By the end of the video, you're not going to believe that there are certain powerful non-special grade sorcerers who can exceed the might of the special grade sorcerers themselves. When Kanjago awakened marked humans to participate in the calling games, there were people who became sorcerers against their will and were practically not equipped for combat. For example, Rin Amai, who gained the extremely not powerful diabetes power or sugar manipulation. His ability is increasing the body's sugar level to the point that it could manifest a physical form. Interestingly, it's usually a, a pudding. A curse technique perfect for your grandpa, the one with the sweet tooth. My grandpa was crazy sweet tooth. But watch out sugar addicts, because this technique can actually give you low blood sugar. Rin was in fact so weak that he was just an errand boy for the stronger sorcerers in the culling games. Seems like he's a different type of sugar daddy. Another weakling from the culling games is Remy, with her scorpion hair technique. Aside from the weak poison in her ability, the girl is practically useless. That's why she ended up working under Reggie Star, who was a stronger awakened type in the game. There's also Kokun from the crazy cult Q. In case you forgot, this knockoff Quincy group of users wanted to turn the whole Jujutsu world upside down by preventing Master Tengen from merging with a Star Plasma vessel. Kokun was sent along with his bestie, Bayer, who was actually the strongest member among their ranks to kill Riko Abanai. But these curse users were so weak that Gojo and Suguru easily just demolished them. That's why they eventually hired Toji to finish the job for them. Surprisingly, Riko's guardian was also a sorcerer, Misato Kuroi. Yeah, she was a sorcerer. I thought she was just a cosplayer or something. Although it wasn't shown whether she possessed any curse techniques, she was still capable of armed combat. She even fought off a curse user wearing a paper bag mask, who was after Rico's bounty. The sorcerers I've mentioned aren't really part of the sorcerer society, and they're pretty weak, so I placed them in the lowest rank of hierarchy, grade 4. This rank is also automatically given to the students when they first enter Jujutsu High. It means they're basically newbies in the Jujutsu world, and quite inexperienced as sorcerers. Some students, though, don't have updated grade ranks, but since they've learned the basics and can take part in missions, these sorcerers can be considered at the level of average sorcerer or grade 3 sorcerers. They might be ranked second to last, but don't underestimate these guys, because there's a sorcerer in them who can actually clone himself, and another who can even predict the future. Here is the average Kyoto Freshi, Arata Nita. This jumpy sorcerer isn't your usual fighter type. He's always pretty nervous on missions especially when he joined Aoi in Shibuya. Still, his curse technique is quite handy. His painkiller ability works like first aid, since he can stop any injury from getting worse. He can't heal injuries, but it's a great help for the frontliners to keep them from dying, you know? Arata's older sister, Akari Nita, can also be considered a grade 3 sorcerer. Even though Akari isn't a combat type, her work as an auxiliary manager at Jujutsu High puts her above the usual grade 4. She's a graduate of Kyoto High, so she has a good understanding of Jujutsu. By the way, these managers handle other sorcerers during missions and cast curtains and windows to protect the public and hide the sorcerer's presence. Jujutsu Hai likely trust their abilities enough to handle such tasks. Of ahead of these managers and the assistant director at Tokyo Jujutsu High is probably one of the most underrated characters, Kiyotaka Izuchi. Even though he's not great at fighting, curse spirits and users, his real strength is in his deep knowledge of Jujutsu. Even Gojo Sensei trusted him the most when it came to crucial missions. Ishichi was able to create a simple barrier that concealed even the powerful, hollow purple of Gojo. When Geto left Jujutsu High to pursue his goal of eliminating non-sorcerers, he took with him a bunch of discriminated and bullied sorcerers. Take the twin sisters, for example. The first one, Mimiko Hasaba. Her abilities used a rag doll tied around the neck with a rope to manipulate her targets into hanging themselves. That's pretty creepy. 
but I think she could only target weaker sorcerers since she wasn't shown using it against others, aside from the managers during the night parade of 100 demons. And Nanako, who used her phone as a medium for her abilities, could teleport others using the phone's camera and probably do anything she wanted with the target's photo. The girl also thought she could take down Sukuna using her powers. But you know, the twins were finished as soon as the king lifted his fingers. A legit grade 3 sorcerer from Kyoto High is Mai Zenin. She barely had any talent in Jujutsu and had a low curse energy output which was kind of a big deal since her construction ability relied on the amount of curse energy she had in stock. The result? She could only produce a tiny bullet a day, which is why her family, one of the big three clans, considered her a failure. To make things even worse, she was also a weak fighter. Her twin sister Maki, who was also considered a disgrace by the family, left her sister because she got fed up with their treatment. I mean, no wonder Mai's life was hell. But even though she wasn't a talented sorcerer, she made up for it by being a skilled sniper. In chapter 134, she even used a real rifle, which Kunjaku actually commended, saying it's wise to use conventional weapons against sorcerers. Ultimately, she sacrificed herself for Maki to gain the full powers of Heavenly Restriction. You see, in the Jujutsu world, twins are like one being. This means that the curse energy Mai possessed was actually shared with Maki, preventing the full potential of Heavenly Restriction. When Mai died, Maki lost the remaining curse energy her sister had shared with her. This allowed Maki to reach the peak of heavenly restriction. Similar to Toji, but not the same because we both know Toji is a different level. Aside from the awakened humans, there were also people from the past who were incarnated into present bodies. Like Roku Jushi Mio, who was a diehard sumo fan. His Demian expansion was literally a sumo ring. There were other incarnated sorcerers like him, and I'm also going to explain them as we climb up the tower. Oh, sorry, wrong anime. I mean ranks. When Master Tengen was set to merge with a new star plasma vessel, the organization Q was against it and even put a bounty on the head of the new vessel, Riko Amanai. That's why curse users eventually went after her for the reward, like this old man with his two creepy Shikigami, and this horror villain wannabe with his grocery store paper bag mask who could uh, clone himself. But Geto and Gojo took care of them really easily. Another set of sorcerers awakened the culling games included Hanyu, the jet-haired lady who picked on rookies and weaker sorcerers like Rin Amai, and her partner, the helicopter-haired guy, Haba, who could easily slice through steel with his hair. Their techniques were pretty cool, but these mofos were literally airheads and couldn't maximize their abilities, so they were defeated by Yuji. Megami also faced a rowdy group of awakened sorcerers who tried to gang up on him, but Bro was so cool by this point he just overpowered and killed them. The first victim was Chizuru Hari, who had the ability to turn his fingers into deadly claws. He was quite skilled, managing to get 28 points in the game, but against Megami, no chance. There was also the downer, Junpei Yushino. You know, this kid had your typical villain backstory, constantly bullied and picked on. That's why he turned into a curse user as soon as he learned Jujutsu. He could summon a jellyfish Shikigami aka Moondregs, which could paralyze its target with a unique poison. Even though he seemed pretty strong when he fought Yuji, remember that our boy was still a newbie sorcerer back then. Yuji actually used Naruto powers, the power of words, to turn him back to the good side. But sadly, I hate to transform Junpei's soul, which is irreversible and causes death. Aside from the calling game weaklings, there were other awakened humans strong enough to take on the real deal sorcerers. One of them was Charles Bernard, who fought against Kinji Hakari. Bernard posed quite a challenge thanks to his curse technique. Using his G-War staff, he could see slightly into his target's future after drawing blood from them. Hmm, kind of like hockey, but without the blood. But the third year delinquent of Jujutsu High was just too much for the self-declared mangaka. Hakari even finished him off with a single blow inside his domain expansion. Would you believe that Gege made a Demon Slayer crossover in just a single panel? Yes sir. When the swordsman Hagane Daido was incarnated to take part in the calling games, he was practically running around looking for a katana. Then he stumbled upon a toy sword which had the sound effect of a water breathing special move. The sword even looked like Tanjiro's katana. My man Gege, you know? I was trying to slip stuff through. Actually, I don't really know why Kanjaku reincarnated this guy to participate in the calling games because unlike other summoned players who were basically powerful sorcerers, Dino was an outlier who couldn't even use cursed energy. But him not being a sorcerer didn't seem to matter because his skill as a master swordsman and his ability to sense things around him made him exceptionally off the charts. Even though he couldn't use a curse technique, he was so strong that he could fight against the powerful cursed spirit transformation of Naoya Zeni. Old Man Daido was kind of like Toji, plus he even taught Maki to sense everything. But again, why did Kanjaku bring him back? It couldn't have been to mentor Maki, right? 
These grade 3 sorcerers are basically your average ones, and they're nothing compared to the stronger sorcerers and the higher grades. One of them even had the powers of Sung Jin Wu, like literally the ability to summon the dead. But before reaching grade 2, there's actually a semi-grade 2 in between. Kind of like a stepping stone that helps sorcerers transition from average to elite ranks. Take Kyoto High's Momo Nishimiya, for example. According to Panda, the broom riding witch's ranking is probably about a semi-grade 2 level. Momo's abilities focus on her curse tool broom, which she can control for flight and spamming wind type attacks like the wind scythe. Usually she works as a scout and messenger during missions. And with the mastery of her tool manipulation, she's considered an above average sorcerer. During the Shibuya incident, Sudo Geto hired elite sorcerers to help him seal Gojo using the prison realm. The curse users who guarded the powerful curtains, aka barriers, were just some who actually wanted Gojo out of the picture so they could continue their crimes and evil works, like Grandma Ogami. With her seance technique, it's like Jin Wu's necromancer ability, but with a twist. She could summon a body or a soul's information into a living vessel so the new body could harness the powers of the summoned entity. Ogami used her abilities to deceive people and execute assassinations, like when she turned herself into a little girl to kill a target, Savage. Granny might not be a combat type sorcerer, but her power to manipulate people was definitely dangerous. When paired with her summons, she was able to outmatch even the strength of the grade 2 sorcerer Ino. Actually, this grandma was so heartless that she adopted kids just to use them as vessels for her powers. Take this dude who really thought Ogami was his grandma. Using the seance technique, he was used as a vessel to summon Toji. Granny knew the Zenin outcast was one of the strongest fighters, so she transferred his body info into her grandson. She commanded him to eliminate sorcerers, but to her surprise, Toji's info was so powerful that it overcame her grandson's soul. Her orders backfired, making her Toji's first target. Talk about bad luck, well deserved. One of the members of the Suda Ghetto gang was this lunatic, Haruto Shigemo. I don't know, but this curse user was giving off vibes, you know, like the Joker or the Riddler. What do you think? He was a crazy dude who enjoyed the suffering of others, especially when he slashed them with his creepy hand sword. Despite his attitude, this coward only picked fights with sorcerers he thought he could handle, and usually he just ran off when he was about to face stronger sorcerers. He almost overpowered a grade 3 sorcerer, Nobara, but was completely helpless against a grade 1 like Nanami. Aside from his cursed weapon, he also had the innate ability, Miracles, shown as marks under his eyes. His power stored small miracles that he had seen or experienced, and then released them when he was in danger to push his luck and survive. Surprisingly, he got unlucky when he ran into Sukuna. Shigo's sword were actually made by his fellow, Juzo Kumiya. This baldy was skilled enough to create powerful cursed weapons, such as his masterpiece, Dragonbone, a sword with a three-barreled engine that revs up with every slash for a more powerful hit. Aside from that, he could also summon curtains, like the one that covered the entire Jujutsu High, keeping Gojo outside the barrier. Juzo was also powerful enough to block Principal Gakukanji's burst of cursed energy using just his axe. He's a lot like Shigemo when he turns on his frenzy mode, but unlike Shigemo, he was too cocky. He even wanted to turn Gakuganji into a wallet and Gojo into a rack. Another curse user who hated Gojo's guts was Jiro Awasaka. He used to be a hitman for hire kind of sorcerer until Sensei showed up. Old man Jiro was clearly an expert fighter when he took on Megumi and Yuji head on together. Besides being a tough guy who kind of looked like Chairman Netero and even worse, signature socks like the Pro Hunter, he also wielded a tricky curse technique. His inverse ability was pretty annoying because, like the name suggests, strong attacks became weaker against him, while weaker ones were powerful enough to cause damage. My genius boy Megumi was able to figure this out, and he turned out to be a bad matchup for Jiro, since the Ten Shadows have a weaker Shigami, like the Rabbit Escape. The fluffy Tokyo High student Po, I mean Panda, is also considered to be a semi-grade 2 sorcerer. Honestly, I think his current grade doesn't actually justify his abilities, because when he switches his cores, he can transform into more powerful beasts. He's technically a cursed corpse created by Masamichi Yaga, and a highly developed one among the principal's creations. With just his fists and a high degree of cursed energy, he can exercise cursed spirits easily. And even though he's kind of a massive stuffed toy, he can be super tanky by coating himself with cursed energy to absorb body blows. Basically, Panda has three cores, the neutral base form, the powerful gorilla, and the sister core Triceratops. When he activates his gorilla mode, his physical strength and speed are extremely buffed, but the downside is the transformation burns a lot of cursed energy. And when he shifts to the Triceratops core, he claims that his sister's form kills anyone who will look at her because she's super shy. The abilities of Panda's Sasaki form were not shown since when he used it, 
he was just smashed to pieces by Hajime Kashimo. Let's take it up a notch with a much different level, the grade 2. Sorcerers who reach this level are above average and can now go solo on missions. And did you know that most great sorcerers were usually grade 1 and 2? For example, there's a sorcerer who can literally summon multiple mythical beasts like a dragon. Like this savage incarnated dude who only wears suspenders as his top, Hiyori Hazenoki. I mean, he wasn't actually graded since he was an ancient curse user, but his skills and abilities clearly were above average. Hazenoki could use his body parts as explosives. And bro, he just casually scoops out his own eyes and makes it work like a damn grenade. The only reason he could pull something like that was because he was capable of reverse curse technique. So that's why he could basically create a ton of explosives. Even though he was an elite sorcerer who was an expert in Jujutsu, battling Kenjaku was a huge mistake. Going back to Jujutsu High, Nanami Senpai's classmate ranked among the great two sorcerers, the ever smiling Yuhai Bara, the guy who looked like Shalnark of the Phantom Troop, but with dark hair. Though his skills weren't displayed, it was mentioned that he joined Nanami on a mission to exercise a great two curse spirit. This means his skill level was well above average. However, it still wasn't enough because when the cursed spirit turned out to be a grade 1, Haibara met an untimely death. As you have seen, some sorcerers do not possess innate techniques. That's why some of them focus on mastering simple domain techniques and fight using a katana, like the sophomore at Kyoto High, Kasumi Miwa. She might not possess any curse technique, but her swordsmanship skills with new shadow style make her an above average sorcerer. She has trained so much with her katana that it's practically a curse tool now thanks to the massive amount of curse energy she has poured into it. Additionally, she can cast simple domains from the new shadow style technique, where anything that enters within her circle would be automatically blocked by Miwa's katana. Though she can easily destroy curse spirits with a single slash, she was clearly no match for powerful curse users like Kanjaku. Luckily, she was saved by a real master of the new shadow style technique and one of the most skilled sorcerers in grade 1, Kusakabe Sensei. Now let's go with the former commanders of Tsukuru's gank. Even though their powers weren't shown, being the shock colors of the rowdy group meant they were powerful enough to be recognized by Geto. The first one was a shorty, Manami Suda. Another one was Toshihisa, Negi. They may have been quite strong, but the cautious Kusakabe, who is easily a grade 1 sorcerer, thought he could take them on. And you know how careful Kusakabe is when it comes to choosing his battles. So these two commanders were probably a rank lower than him, like grade 2 level sorcerers. And the last commander who looks like he's straight out of Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is the heart-shaped nips guy, LaRue. His innate ability, Heart Catch, creates a massive virtual hand that can grab and crush his targets from a distance. LaRue can spam the massive hands, though he has to absorb one-tenth of the damage from each destroyed hand back to himself. Additionally, once he grabs his target, he can activate the extension technique, QD Honey. This forces his enemies to lock their focus on him with hard eyes. A simple move was enough to distract Sukuna and stop the king from dodging and blocking incoming attacks. There's also this weird kid whose powers are clearly on an elite level. My little bro, Ui Ui, with a crazy big sis syndrome, like he's obsessed with his sister Mei Mei. I still don't get this relationship. Can you help me understand this in the comments if you know? Like, what is this okay? Anyways, because he practically worships his big sis, he joins her even on dangerous grade 1 missions. Despite being too young to be a pro sorcerer, he always proves himself useful. When Mei Mei fought the smallpox deity, he calmly acted as the cursed spirit's target and was able to easily counter the enemy's domain expansion using the new shadow style simple domain. On top of that, he possesses an insane curse technique that could easily be top tier support even in the battle against the king of curses, the spatial transference. With this ability, he's literally like a magician because my boy can make his target disappear beneath a cloak. Actually, he can teleport himself and others to locations and people he has previously marked allowing them to go back and forth in battles anytime they want. But that's not all. He can also switch the souls of sorcerers using his innate ability. Like when Yuji and Kusakabe switched places during their fight against Sukuna so that Kusakabe could use simple domain using Yuji's body against the king. Probably the most complex ability belongs to Kirara Hoshi. The third year dropout from Tokyo High used to look like this. And now Kirara identifies as this teen. Hoshi's innate curse technique is called Love Rendezvous. No matter how hard someone tries to attack, they cannot come near Hoshi unless they follow the order of the stars in the Southern Cross constellation, which forms the basis of Hoshi's abilities. Hoshi can place and mark these stars onto sorcerers and Shikigami. 
causing them to attract each other in an infinite loop. This will continue unless their enemies can identify and follow the positions of the stars Imai, Akrux, Mimosa, Ginon, and Gakrux from Earth. Honestly, I, I don't know anything about these stars. Hoshi's understanding of Jujutsu pretty much stands out among other sorcerers, even the elites. That's why Hoshi is likely exceptional among the ranks of grade 2. The grade 2 sorcerer who according to Nanami could easily be a semi grade 1 with his skills and abilities is my humble guy, Takuma Ino. Bro chooses to stay at grade 2 because he wants Nanami's blessing to climb up the ranks. When Senpai died, Ino was entrusted with Nanami's weapon, which had essentially become a cursed tool after being constantly used for the ratio technique. As a skilled fighter, Ino joined the battle against Sukuna using Nanami's blunt sword. He has also shown the ability to use the simple domain of the new shadow style when he tried to sustain the slashes from Sukuna's malevolent shrine. On top of that, he has a unique curse technique that activates when he hides his face with his blackhead mask. You know how Spider-Man and Batman hide their faces and go superhero mode? I think that's how Eno's powers work. Except he looks more like a robber or a kidnapper when he does that. When Eno puts on his mask, he becomes a spiritual medium for four auspicious beasts. Kaichi, Reiki, Kirin, and Ryu. Kaichi is like a homing missile that keeps on chasing its target. Reiki works like a power-up that makes Eno tanky and speedy. Kirin, on the other hand, is a local anesthetic that cancels Eno's sense of pain. Oh, I think I could use this one for all the rejections I've been getting lately and for my current fever. Although beast number three makes Eno really tired, I think I am still willing to take that risk right now for myself. And the last auspicious beast, Ryu, has abilities similar to Kaichi, but it's more like a massive snake dragon that will chase Eno's target and crush them. If only Eno believed in his own crazy abilities, he'd definitely even make it up to grade one level. But before a sorcerer can become a legit top tier grade one sorcerer, they must first complete a solo mission assigned to them. While waiting for their promotion, they're considered semi grade one sorcerers. And here they are. Do you remember the sorcerer who can actually buff a sorcerer's abilities by 200%? She's actually a semi grade one sorcerer, Utahime Iori. The student supervisor from Kyoto. She mainly acts as a buff support because of her innate technique, Solo Forbidden Area. Through a ritual dance and incantations, she can amplify the techniques of any willing sorcerer within her range. Normally she can buff a technique by 120%, but when Gaku Ganji added music to the ritual and Gojo joined in with his chants, the total output of Hollow Purple was boosted to a massive 200%. Aside from that, she's also a capable fighter who was fast enough to save Miwa from Kanjaku's attack. Tokyo High's alumni and primary doctor can also be considered a semi grade 1 sorcerer, even though she isn't the combat type, the nonchalant Shoko Airi. That's because she actually possesses an ability that even Gojo couldn't achieve. She may not show any curse techniques, but her mastery of reverse curse technique is on a whole different level. She can use it not only on herself, but also on others to heal them. Usually reverse curse techniques are possessed only by top tier sorcerers and most of the time these sorcerers can only heal themselves but there are a few who can use it on others like Sukuna and Yuta. This means Shoko's abilities can be compared to these powerful sorcerers. That's probably why Jujutsu Hai sees their doctor as someone of value. Did you know about this weird curse user who treated a cursed spirit like a real pet? The serial killer Niji Abina, one of the evil sorcerers who worked for Kanjaku, was strange enough to put a leash on a cursed spirit that looked like a damn bulldog. Back in Shibuya, Yuji sensed that Abino's power was greater than the grasshopper cursed spirit Kogai, which May said was powerful enough to be a semi grade 1 curse, meaning Abino was also easily a semi grade 1 curse user. But it didn't really make a difference because Mei Mei was so strong that she overwhelmed him with just her raw strength and a massive axe. Now it's time for everyone's stand. One of the trio freshies, Nobara Kogisaki. The powerful special grade Mahito even said that her resonance was his natural enemy. Just like Yuji's abilities, because she can actually bypass the body and directly attack the soul of her target. Although she was initially ranked as a grade 3 sorcerer by Jujutsu Hai, her skills and abilities were enough to be endorsed as a grade 1. With her insane curse technique, she could even fight against cursed spirits and sorcerers that were ranked higher than her. Nobara's innate technique, Straw Doll, work like some sort of witchcraft because she can damage her target using nails and a straw doll. Like when she fought the death painting brothers Esso and Kechitsu who were easily powerful curses and our girl went crazy injuring herself using her own technique just to defeat them. But because of her careless nature she met an untimely death at the hands of Mahito during the Shibuya incident. She got ahead of herself when she thought she could score a win against him. 
Yeah, I know you were hoping for a comeback after chapter 127 where Arata said Nobara's chances of surviving weren't completely zero. But let me break it to you, bro. In an interview, Akutami revealed that he planned Nobara's death even before writing the Shibuya incident arc. So I guess that settles it. But you can cry now. <laughs> so will I. <laughs> the big three families all possess exceptional curse techniques, easily making them elite sorcerers. Just like the third year student from Kyoto and the former heir to the Kamo clan, Norotoshi Kamo, he can easily solo missions and even acts as the leader of his Kyoto classmates. Kamo's talent for blood manipulation is highlighted by his exceptional longbow skills. He fills his arrow with curse energy and even directs them using his own blood. But that's not all. He can also use the clan's innate ability to increase his combat strength using flowing red scale. His technique might be nasty, sometimes, because he also throws a blood blade he calls slicing exorcism and even entraps targets with crimson binding. On top of these skills, he can also compress blood using convergence and fire, a laser-like piercing blood. The thing is, he usually runs out of blood, which is why he brings blood bags with him. The boy be up in hospitals. People, you know, donate blood for others. Our boy donates blood for himself. One of the biggest surprises in the series was when it was revealed that Yuji's father turned out to be the reincarnation of Sukuna's twin. Since twins are considered one being, it means that if he had been a sorcerer, he could have possessed Sukuna's techniques with the potential for immense curse energy and abilities. And it's possible Yuji's insane physical stats were actually from his father. Meanwhile, Jin's wife, Kaori Itadori, could also be considered an elite sorcerer because she possessed a powerful curse technique. She's actually one of the bodies Kanjaku used to control, and he even absorbed Kaori's anti-gravity system. Like this family could easily be all stars in the Jujutsu world. Do you think they could have been a family of sorcerers right from the start? Like even Yuji's grandpa, Wasuke? As one of the big three families, the Zenin clan had a squad of top tier sorcerers, whose powers were known to be at least semi-grade one or higher. Ranta was part of this top sorcerer unit, called the Hei. He had this insane curse technique that could paralyze anyone with a single look, and he used this to help Jinichi Zenin against Maki. But Ranta's technique had one problem, it put a crazy strain on his eyes. When Maki broke free, his eyes started bleeding like crazy. The strain was so intense that he eventually couldn't handle it and died from the injuries. Another member of the Hei was Chojuro. This old man teams up with Jinichi and Ranta to trap Maki using earthbending techniques. But Maki was too powerful. She broke free and took on Chojuro and Nobuaki Zenin. Despite their efforts, Maki killed both of them in probably less than a minute. Fast forward in chapter 169, the incarnated Reggie Star with his exceptional control over cursed energy and his receipt ability, the contractual recreation, made it a tough battle for Megami. Reggie was a powerful sorcerer who led a gang of barbaric curse users in the calling games. He even took down Megami's divine dog totality, easy, with no sweat. He was capable enough to outdo a Megami because aside from his superior close combat skills, he could create weapons using his curse technique. Actually, he could literally bring anything written on his contracts into existence. Aside from his weapons, he could kind of heal and refresh himself, like when he used a receipt for two-day spa treatment to completely reset his injuries. I could use that one. Then we have Miguel Oduo. Although he's not actually graded, his skills and abilities are clearly above normal grade 2 sorcerers. This guy's next level strong. Like he went toe to toe with some of the strongest sorcerers out there. In Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, Geto knew that Miguel was strong enough to solo Gojo. Yuta had the same respect for him, which is why our boy asked Miguel to help out in the fight against Sukuna. But what makes Miguel so formidable that two special great sorcerers believed in his strength? It's his overall jujutsu skills, especially his curse technique, Prayer Song. He uses a rhythmic beat with his body to drive away curses and power up his physical abilities. Even without a domain, he basically buffs himself and nerfs his opponent. And when Sukuna tried to cut him, Miguel was so slick he was just dancing and dodging it like it was nothing. The one downside was that Miguel didn't have much offensive power, unlike Mekamaru. If you think about it, most of the students in Kyoto are basically top tier sorcerers. First there's Kamo, and then there's the sophomore Kokichi Muta, aka Ultimate Mekamaru. And while only being a student, he was able to achieve the rank of a semi grade 1 sorcerer. Yo, this guy was like Shishio Makoto. Remember that mummy dude from Roroni Kenshin? Actually, Muta was covered in bandages and couldn't even walk in the sun because of his heavenly restriction. But because of this, he had an immense amount of curse energy 
and could use his curse technique over long distances. With puppet manipulation, he attended school and completed missions using his proxy, Mekamaru, whose abilities were almost like Geno's, you know, Saitama sidekick. He made a binding vow with Mahito to get a healthy body in exchange for leaking info to the enemy. Once healed, he activated Ultimate Mekamaru Absolute Mode, like literally a mobile suit from Gundam, to try to take down Mahito and Kenjaku. Sadly, his heroic attempt to redeem himself didn't work. Now aside from Kyoto High's Muta, Tokyo has its own semi-grade 1 student sorcerer, Togi Inumaki. He inherited his clan's insanely powerful curse technique, making them outlaws in the Jujutsu world. The higher-ups even have a standing order to eliminate any sorcerer born with their family's technique. That's the crazy ability of cursed speech. With the power of his words, he can command cursed spirits to do practically anything, like explode or get crushed. He can even affect anyone who hears him, making them sleep or run away. During normal conversation, he just uses rice ball ingredients and you have to figure out what he's trying to say. I'm just saying, with bro's powers, I think I can make any girl fall for me, right? Hello, Alexandra Daddario. Your boy's ready. I don't know what would happen to me though, because there is a catch. Using this technique can mess up his throat, depending on the command or the power of the sorcerer. Well, my throat's pretty messed up right now. For example, using Blast Away against Hanami was too much for him. That's why he always kept some throat medicine handy. I'm keeping some handy right now. Halls all the way. Because of his abilities, Toge can handle solo missions, making him a legit semi-grade 1 sorcerer. If these sorcerers are crazy strong with their wild abilities, then grade 1 sorcerers are on a whole different level. Way above the other grades as the top tier sorcerers. You won't believe it, but there's a grade 1 sorcerer who can create an army of cursed corpses. Even the higher ups were so threatened, they almost made him a special grade. Back in the calling games, there's Ryu Ishigori. This guy was actually an incarnated sorcerer, and I swear whatever shampoo he used had to be magic, because he could blast curse energy from his hair like a cannon. This technique made him a major problem, especially when he attacked from a distance. But he wasn't just about long range attacks, he was also a pro in hand to hand combat. Like he literally traded blows with Yuta during the calling games. And Ryu could also cast domain expansion. When he tried to use it at the same time as Yuta and Takako, the barrier shattered before any of their domains could fully form. Just like Takako Uro, this girl cast her domain expansion, but it shattered before it could fully take shape. Like Ryu, she was an incarnated sorcerer. Back in the Heian era, she was actually the leader of an elite assassin group from the Fujiwara clan. Takako was a close combat expert with a killer curse technique and was a master of counterattacks. Even Yuta struggled against her. For example, when Udo warped one of his punches, countered with an elbow and followed up with a blast wave from her technique, Yuta couldn't land a solid hit on her without using Rika and his copied curse techniques. Her curse technique, Sky Manipulation, lets her grab and pull the air around her like it's a sheet. In a fight, she twists and bends her opponent's attacks. She can't crush them directly, but she can shatter the sky like ice and hit them hard, getting past defenses and dealing serious damage. Now the guy I mentioned before who possessed an ability that even the higher ups considered a huge threat in the Jujutsu world was the real deal veteran Masamichi Yaga. With his curse technique, Cursed Corpse, he could bring to life the dolls he created and control them. Plus he was the only one capable of creating fully independent cursed corpses with their own cursed energy like Panda. Because of this the higher ups nearly promoted Masamichi to special grade, fearing the potential threat of an army of cursed corpses. One of his greatest creations was Panda, who is so advanced he possesses three cores and is even considered a semi grade 2 sorcerer. But there were others like him, the heavy puncher Kathy, who Yuji defeated when he entered the school, the sleeper Sukamoto, and the dog like Takeru. Aside from his unrivaled skills in puppet jujutsu, Yaga was also a great close combat fighter who could easily solo curse spirits. When Gojo was sealed, the jujutsu elders took this opportunity to send Gakuganji to kill Yaga. Sneaky bastards. Although the grade of the principle of Kyoto High isn't revealed, defeating Yaga is enough to consider him a grade 1 level sorcerer. Yoshinobu Gakuganji, the commander Yamamoto lookalike, is also one of the higher ups in the jujutsu world, so you know his abilities and knowledge are top notch. Gakuganji's technique turns his body into a literal sound system. He cranks up the volume on his electric guitar, shredding solos to blast waves of curse energy at his targets, just like when he fought against Juzo. I'm a bit confused about that part though. Gakuganji's a higher up, right? And these elders are Jujutsu conservatives who are usually against modern sorcerers with modern curse techniques. So why is Grandpa rocking an electric guitar? 
Well, I guess it's okay because he also used a traditional instrument, like when he helped Iodi's incantations through his music, boosting Goja's Holler Purple output by 200%. And you know what? Even if a curse technique is kind of weak, that doesn't mean a sorcerer cannot become one of the elites. Take Mei Mei, for example. Her curse technique, Blackbird Manipulation, is pretty simple. She can control crows using her curse energy, using them as drones for surveying and as messengers. But by using a binding vow on herself, she was able to maximize her potential by turning these crows into 9-11 planes. Like bro, Bird Strike literally dives down into its target with destructive power. Only Gojo, Kanjaku, and Sukuna were able to survive the impact. That's not even her specialty. With just her raw strength, she can destroy cursed spirits using her axe. She even trashed a semi-grade 1 cursed user, Ebena, without using cursed energy. Like yo, Shorty's a gym rat. But still, she still kinda gives me a weird vibe. Not because she loves money, but because of her relationship with her little bro. I mean, she takes advantage of it, she uses him as bait. Am I the only one who thinks that's pretty crazy or what? Like that's your younger bro, no? Sis? Unlike Mei Mei, at least this bro is a good Aniki. Because he always wanted to protect his little bros. He was everyone's big bro, Chozo. And according to Kenjaku, the eldest of the death paintings, he was comparable to a grade 1 sorcerer. Chozo was an expert in close combat fights, able to overpower Yuji back in Shibuya, and even outclass Naoya, who was the head of the strongest sorcerers in the Zenin clan's elite unit, the Hei. He was a product of Naruto Shikamo, aka Kanjaku's experiments, where he was given their DNA. That's why he became a user of the Kamo family's technique, blood manipulation. Chozo was actually so skilled with his ability that he was able to create blood using his cursed energy. He could use convergence, which compresses blood to its absolute limit, and fire a powerful blood laser attack with insane speed using piercing blood. But that's not all. Using Convergence, he created an original technique called Supernova, which worked like blood bullets that exploded like mini bombs. My big bro fulfilled his duties to his little bro when he sacrificed himself to Yuji. Thank god Yuji still has another brother, the fanboy macho, Aoi Todo. Did you know that he's the only grade 1 sorcerer who's still a student and is actually from a non-sorcerer family? Like the guy's a Dog. Toto is definitely one of the strongest at Jujutsu High. Bro loves fighting and is so good at hand-to-hand -hand combat that he can even combine it with his curse technique Boogie Woogie. This ability lets him switch positions with anything that has cursed energy. When Toto lost his hand fighting Mahito, he replaced it with a Vibra Slap, which lets him swap places 50 times per second. Like it got even better when he used a Binding Vow to limit the number of swaps per strike. This way he can choose multiple targets and increase its range. His technique is so tricky that even Sukuna was really confused. It's like a trick within a trick. By far my favorite character. Toto also had a huge understanding of curse energy, which is why Bro can use Black Flash, just like Kento Nanami. Nanami previously held the record for using Black Flash four times in a row. Even though he's gone, Nanami has his own fan community now, especially because of this scene. Nanami also had a binding vow with himself. While working for Jujutsu High, he limited his curse energy. But once his shift ended and overtime kicked in, his curse energy got a huge boost, making him much stronger. This vow also worked well with his ratio technique. Nanami's technique split his target into 10 lines, creating a weak spot with a 7 to 3 ratio. He could choose any part to divide, like the head, torso, arms, or legs. This worked both on people and objects. When he died, his ratio technique was absorbed by his weapon, turning it into a cursul that was passed on to his sidekick, Takuma Ino. Can you believe that Nanami wasn't actually the strongest grade 1 sorcerer? Even Gojo and Meimei agreed and Nanami himself admitted that Kusa Kabe was the top sorcerer at this rank. <laughs> this guy kills me. He's the funniest guy. What makes Kusakabe even stronger is that he achieved grade 1 without having a curse technique. <laughs> This guy's so funny. To be honest, I think this guy's way funnier than Takuma, but his humor is more low key. Like, remember back in Shibuya, even though it wasn't directly mentioned, Kusakabe admits he can't fight special great curse spirits and avoids them at all costs. <laughs> he even tried to trick Panda to buy some time because he didn't want to die. All that doesn't mean that Kusakabe is a wuss though, he just knows his own limits. If he knows he can take on enemies at his level or weaker, he's super confident. Like when Neji and Suda tried to fight him in Panda. Kusakabe is also a really strong swordsman and an expert in the new shadow style simple domain, which he showed off when he saved Miwa from Kenjaku's maximum technique, Uzumaki. And Gojo even mentioned in chapter 254 that to use a simple domain, beginners need a binding vow to cast it. But Kusakabe is such a dog, he doesn't even need a vow. 
Now, when Kusakabe had to fight Sukuna, he managed to hold his own. Even Sukuna praised his reflexes. Kusakabe handled Sukuna's slashes by predicting the source of curse energy and his movement. What I really like about Kusakabe, besides his low-key humor, is that he's the type who complains a lot, but is also very reliable. If something's confusing, he explains everything in the end, proving he's smart and knowledgeable in Jujutsu. He's so sharp, he even created a plan to defeat Sukuna. Aside from being strong, Nanami, Meimei, and Goju support him because Kusakabe is kind-hearted. <laughs> he's such a little devil, but he's actually a good guy. Besides these grade 1 sorcerers, there's actually a rank called the Special Grade 1, whose powers are pretty much like a grade 1, but they exist outside the ranking system. Like the key member of the Hei, Jinichi Zenin. This jack dude was known for the explosive power of his punches and his raw strength, just like his lookalike, Uvogin of the Phantom Troop. With his technique, Missile Fists, he could easily level a building with a barrage of punches like a goddamn demolition crane. But even with his strength, Maki was so badass that she could cut off the dude's head. Well, that's not as wild as killing her own father, the special grade one sorcerer, Ogi Zenni. This old guy was a powerful swordsman sorcerer, and with his technique, Blazing Courage, he could make his sword flaming hot, literally covered in flames. It was like the real deal flame breathing. And when Maki was able to cut her daddy's sword in their duel, Ogi managed to extend the broken blade of his katana using his curse energy. Ogi also mastered the anti domain technique. Falling Blossom Emotion, enabling his blade to automatically strike anything it touched. According to Ogi, he was easily on par with his own brother, the former head of the Zenin clan, Naobito. Yeah, I don't know about that because this dude was highly respected in the Jujutsu world. And excluding Gojo, he was once considered the fastest sorcerer. Like in Shibuya, his speed and power even surpassed Nanami. And the crazy thing was, Naobito was actually drunk at the time. Aside from his speed and strength, he also possessed a rather tricky curse technique, projection sorcery. Here's how it works. The innate ability of the Zenin clan lets Naobito split a second into 24 frames, executing precise moves in that time. Anything Naobito touches has to follow the 24 frames per second rule or gets frozen for a second. Naobito uses this to move faster than the eye can see and frees any enemies who can't keep up. Even though he didn't have a domain expansion, the fourth Raikage lookalike was capable of the anti-domain technique falling blossom emotion. Actually, A and now Beta were both considered as one of the fastest characters. And interestingly, they both lost their arms in battle. Coincidence? No. Okay. Now Beto passed on the projection sorcery to his most talented son, but probably the crappiest Zenin, Naoya. He was considered the highest level in one of the big three families and was the former leader of the elite sorcerers, the Hei. He even considered Ogi and Jinichi weaklings compared to himself. He was definitely a strong fighter and proficient in his projection sorcery to overpower opponents. But because of his overconfidence, he was totally defeated by Maki and ultimately he got killed by Maki's mom. But that wasn't the end of it because he returned as a vengeful spirit. Man, this guy's ego was just too much. When he awakened his final form as a cursed spirit, he became even faster, breaking the sound barrier. With his acceleration mode, he could even reach Mach 3. That's as fast as the top fighter jets. In this form, he was able to use a domain expansion, Time Cell Moon Palace. The 24 frames per second rule of the projection sorcery was applied in the short hit environment of his domain. Anyone who didn't move like Naoya would get frozen for a second, and he could accurately target the cells of anyone in his domain. But Maki made a clean sweep against Naoya when she bypassed his domain and killed him for the second time. All of these mentioned sorcerers easily followed the ranking system of the Jujutsu world. But according to Gojo, way back in chapter 18, the current grading system of the higher ups was kind of outdated, especially now that the new generation has the potential to surpass even the rare cases of the special grades. These incredible sorcerers are treated exceptionally because of their destructive potential, capable of single-handedly overthrowing nations, placing them at the highest level of Jujutsu. But just like our sensei, there are other sorcerers powerful enough to be considered part of the top tiers in the special grades. Like there's a sorcerer who even has the power to match Gojo's abilities. And there's even a sorcerer that one shot a powerful ancient cursed spirit. Like the immortal Master Tengen, regarded as one of the foundations of teaching Jujutsu itself. She, or rather they, because you know Tengen is over 1200 years old and no longer bound to any gender after failing to murder the Star Plasma Vessel 12 years ago. This granny lived that long because they're actually a powerful immortal sorcerer. Like Master Tengen's innate ability was immortality. But the thing is they keep getting older and continue to evolve to the point that Tengen could potentially destroy humanity. That is why they use a Star Plasma Vessel to reset aging and stop the evolution process. But since Toji killed the vessel, Riko Amanai, Tengen was forced 
to use his insane powers to contain the evolution and completely preserve their sanity. Luckily, Tengen was very skilled in creating barriers that could hold their own power and will, even if they extended outside their own body. Actually, Tengen was considered one of the pillars of the Jujutsu society. They may not have interacted with the world or fought like typical sorcerers, but Tengen maintained balance in the Jujutsu community by creating pure barriers that kept cursed spirits in check and under control. Aside from that, Tengen also created the barriers at Jujutsu High to hide the school's existence from the public and protect it from threats like evil sorcerers and cursed spirits. And to ensure their own safety, Tengen added an extra layer of security by putting up concealing barriers and empty barriers around the tomb of the star where they lived. But that's not all there is to their powers. Tengen was actually the key factor in Kenjaku's ultimate plan. After Tengen started to evolve, they surpassed being human and were now considered a cursed spirit, one that Kanjaku could control through cursed spirit manipulation. And this mofo's plan was to force the evolution of humans by merging them all with Tengen. So is everybody gonna look like a talking thumb? After Kanjaku took control of Tengen, when he invaded the Tomb of the Star, he gave Tengen's cursed energy to Sukuna. So now the King of Curses has the power to continue the merger and basically do whatever he wants with Tengen. He might not have looked like it, but this creepy dude would have easily been a special grade since he once conquered all of ancient Japan on his own during the Civil War of Wa, Dhruv Lakrawala. He was such a veteran sorcerer that he had discovered a method to cheat death and reincarnate himself. In Chapter 173, it was revealed that Kanjaku summoning him for the Culling Games marked his third time in the world. Dhruv even had two types of independent Shikigami, the giant mole type Kaiju and the Wyvern types. I mean a massive monster rat and flying pterodactyls. No wonder he dominated Japan with these beasts. But even with his powers, Yuta one shot the old guy like he was nothing. Man, Gojo was right, the sorcerers this generation were actually on a whole different level. There's also Sukuna's right hand who's easily another special great cursed user with her insane Aokiji. Ice powers. Urame aka the Frozen Star. And if you don't know loyalty bro, Urame's commitment to his master, Sukuna, goes way back to a thousand years. But she hasn't been around for a thousand years because she was revealed to have been reincarnated into Shiori Himi's body. So how did she manage to achieve this? I guess it's possible that she took a binding vow with Kenjaku to be revived when Sukuna and the powers of the cursed fingers appeared. That's probably why she appeared as soon as Yuji absorbed Sukuna's fingers and even joined Sudo Geto's gang with the ultimate goal of releasing her master into the world. And as soon as Sukuna took over Megami's body, his loyal servant was quick to react and came right to her master. This cursed user is also a powerful sorcerer. Alongside Kanjaku, they were able to fend off all the sorcerers from Jujutsu High when they ganged up on Urame and Surugeto. She even overpowered them with her ice techniques like Frost Calm and Icefall. But did you actually know why Sukuna let Urame stay by his side? Because you know, the king isn't one who needs help or support. According to Jujutsu Kaisen official fanbook, Sukuna let Urame stay by his side not just because they're both sorcerers, but also because she's actually a good cook. I mean, who doesn't want to grow who can cook for you? You know what I'm saying? But here's something even crazier. It's not just because she's a good cook, but she can actually prepare human dishes. Sukuna eats people and Urame cooks them. That's why she was able to stay by the King of Curse's side. What a not so delicious duo. Well, there is actually someone jealous of Urame because this cray cray shorty is totally smitten by the King of Curses, Yorozu. When Kanjaku started the culling games, Yorozu was reincarnated into Megumi's sister, Sumiki. And you know what Yorozu did first as soon as she entered the game? She immediately went after Sukuna to kill him because for her, love meant being the one to kill each other. Bro, I really wish you or I don't find a lunatic girl like Yorozu. Honestly, Shorty wasn't just pure talk because with her powers, she was easily on par with toughest sorcerers of the Heian period. Her innate curse technique construction allowed Yorozu to battle it down with Sukuna's 10 shadows, which the king swiped from using Megami's body. And it's not just simple crafting and drawing up objects, she developed liquid metal as the base of her construction ability and used it to create her ultimate insect armor. Actually, she kind of looked like Gregory from Dragon Ball Z Kai, but a lot creepier, don't you think? But don't be fooled with its funny or creepy looks because with this form, she defeated the five empty generals of the Fujiwara clan. That is why her strength was acknowledged by the great clan. With her construction ability, she was able to create true sphere, which according to Sukuna was actually an impossible task. And when combined with her domain expansion, threefold affliction, anything caught with the perfect sphere would instantly mean death. Compared to these special mentions, Gojo's best bro was a legit special grade sorcerer, but he became known as a curse user after he went crazy with his goal to eliminate all non-sorcerers. The Jujutsu High Dropout, Suguru Geto. 
The thing is, Geto wasn't totally evil from the start. He even considered protecting non-sorcerer humans as the main job of Jujutsu sorcerers. I think you mean all wondering what happened to Geto that completely changed his perspective and even turned it upside down. During his time at Jujutsu High, he was without a doubt a strong sorcerer. His innate technique cursed spirit manipulation allowed him to control any cursed spirit he ingested. Plus, he could absorb all these spirits without any consequences. He can consume cursed spirits without any conditions if their level difference is about two or more. Since Geto's strength was practically between a grade one and a special grade, he could easily absorb any cursed spirit, even special and ancient ones, and fully control them. The only downside? They tasted absolutely nasty. But that's not all. The ultimate technique of cursed spirit manipulation, Maximum Uzumaki, allowed Geto to combine his collective curses and create a single insane attack. Like when he fought Yuta and Rika, he was able to combine over 4,000 cursed spirits into a single massive strike. With his abilities, he became known as the worst of all curse users. It all happened after the supposed star plasma vessel, Riko Amanai died. Geto felt stuck in a never-ending loop of exercising and consuming cursed spirits. So as time went by, he started to ask himself why he was doing stuff like this to help people who don't actually appreciate sorcerers. And he started calling these humans as monkeys. That's why his noble dream of wanting a curse-free world eventually ended up with the darkest plan that actually cost him his friendship with Gojo and his ties with Jujutsu High. He went for a violent method to make it happen. And his ultimate plan was to wipe out all non-sorcerer monkeys. Wait, I think that sounds familiar, right? Is that you, Eden? He was so powerful that he had the capacity to declare war against the entire Jujutsu community with a gang of outcast sorcerers who shared the same dream with him. But then the war sparked by the night parade of a hundred demons was ultimately spoiled after he was defeated by one of the strongest and most powerful sorcerers, Yuta Okotsu. Hanakurusu or Angel can also be considered a special grade due to her curse technique, Jacob's Ladder. This power can be executed on a huge scale, allowing it to totally negate or remove other curse techniques completely. Due to its massive scale, it can neutralize multiple targets and break through seals and strong barriers, which she actually used to free Gojo Satoru from the prison realm. With this technique, she almost exercised Tsukuna. In case you forgot, Hana was actually saved from the slums by one of the students of Tokyo High, Megami Fushiguro, the prodigy who kicked off his career at Jujutsu High as a grade 2 sorcerer and to everyone's surprise, became the head of the Zenin clan. Megami is easily a genius strategist who even possesses the prized curse technique of the Zenin clan, the Ten Shadows. The innate ability of the clan was so strong that it could even rival Gojo's broken limitless technique. According to Sensei, in the past, the heads of their families, users of limitless with the six eyes and the ten shadows, fought on equal footing. Even his high school peers considered Megami a top-notch sorcerer. In the Shibuya incident, he was able to defeat a seasoned curse user, Jiro Awasaka, together with Yuji. He also became a key factor in defeating the powerful special grade Dagon. With a sharp mind, he figured out Hoshi's complex love rendezvous technique. And during the culling games, he was able to fight against elite sorcerers and defeat even veterans like Reggie Star. And on top of his powerful Shikigami of the Ten Shadows, the kid can also open a domain expansion where he can only spam any Shikigami he wants and even a clone of himself. Even though Megami is a top tier sorcerer, Bro kind of nerfs himself because he doesn't believe in his own skills. But Sukuna recognized his powerful technique and had his eyes on Megami, which is why the king ultimately switched vessels and started destroying everyone else. Sukuna even used Mahoraga, the overpowered Shikigami, to ultimately defeat Gojo. After the bath ritual, where Megami's body was dipped into a powerful pool of evil, Sukuna completely took over his new vessel, and my boy just couldn't handle it and got super down, even though Yuji kept trying to save him. If Megami can be considered a one-of-a-kind talent, this sorcerer was a total genius who picked up Jujutsu super fast, even though he hadn't been a sorcerer for long. Because of this, his abilities could also be comparable to special grades, Hiromi Higuruma. He was so skilled in Jujutsu that even Sukuna acknowledged his abilities. According to the king, Higuruma could skillfully use curse techniques as effective as him. Higuruma could summon a mallet and knew how to make it bigger. You know what I mean? But the real deal was his domain expansion, Deadly Sentencing. Here's how it worked. First off, his domain stops all violence. 
Then, Hiromi's opponent gets accused of a past crime by Shikigami called Judge Man. Judge Man presents the evidence for the crime. And then the accused can only give one defense statement. Higuruma gets one chance to rebuke the defense with the evidence. After that, Judge Man delivers a verdict. If found guilty, Judge Man slaps them with penalties, like taking away their cursed energy or their cursed tool. But when the accused doesn't admit guilt, they can request a retrial. And if they are sentenced to death, Higuruma gets the executioner's sword and finishes them off. This sword is so overpowered, anyone cut by it is literally done for. Even Sukuna could not escape the sword's ability. Now let's move to the heavyweight champion of the special grades. And I mean it, because this shorty was literally the heavyweight champion thanks to her insane curse technique, the special grade sorcerer Yuki Sukumo, and her technique Star Rage. With this ability, she could virtually add mass to herself and her Rayquaza look like Shikigami, Garuda. I know it sounded like a simple technique, but its destructive power could easily destroy even the biggest and strongest special grade curses. Just like when she instantly trashed the ancient godlike curse Ganesha while fighting Kenjaku back in chapter 205. But did you know that even though she could only use her curse technique on herself and Garuda, her power still had the capacity to destroy everything around them. That's because there was no actual limit to the amount of change in gravity that Yuki could manipulate, meaning she could increase her mass and density to the point that she could create a black hole which could easily suck up everything around her. When Yuki activated her trump card against Kenjaku, she nearly destroyed everything, pulling it all into an intense dark void. Aside from her top tier curse technique in Shikigami, Yuki was also a great fighter and an expert of reverse curse technique, making her one of the few special grade sorcerers. Even though she was a high ranking sorcerer, she was the only pro not tied to Jujutsu Hai and reported directly to the higher ups at the headquarters. That's why, as a top tier sorcerer, she could turn down any mission she wanted, but still get paid. Damn, we're gonna find me a job like that. Sadly, Shorty got killed by the body hopper Kenjako, aka Sudogeto. Speaking of tough girls, this young lady went from being a garbage sorcerer to literally trashing powerful curses in top tier sorcerers, Maki Zenin. After her twin, Mai, sacrificed herself, Maki unlocked the full potential of heavenly restriction, gaining insane superhuman strength and speed. Plus, Mai made her a copy of an overpowered cursed weapon, the Split Soul Katana, which strikes directly at the soul of its target. As soon as Maki got the upgrades, she instantly trashed her own family, who considered her and Maya a disgrace to the Zenin clan. She overpowered even the elite sorcerers, who were easily semi-grade 1 and higher, all at the same time. Bro, I'll just say that one of the coldest revenges I've ever seen. She even defeated the strongest in the clan, her own cuz, Naoya, twice. Like when Naoya transformed into a powerful vengeful spirit, Maki learned to sense everything and defeated the speedy cursed spirit. She basically reached the levels of the outcast before her and the real nightmare of the Zenin clan who I'll get into in just a few minutes. Another sorcerer who easily belonged to the special grade category was Pseudo Ghetto, the Frankenstein Kenjaku. Like Tengen, he was also an ancient sorcerer who had existed for over a thousand years. But in his case, he was doing brain transplants. Like that's too freaky, no? And it even let him use the host's curse technique. Actually, no one knew Kenjaku's real identity or what he originally looked like before he started switching bodies. But throughout his life, he used many sorcerers as his hosts. Like Suguru Geto, whom Kenjaku took over to gain control of the OP curse spirit manipulation. And you know how he threw the world into chaos by starting the culling games and planning to merge Master Tengen with all of humanity, just to see how Jujutsu would mess up the future of the world. He even set these plans in motion way back when he also used another body like this one to make binding vows and contracts with other sorcerers from the past who would eventually join the culling games. Like for example when he made a deal with Hajime Kashimo. That's how cunning and powerful Kenjaku was. He made a ton of binding vows and shady deals with evil sorcerers from the past. Even Sukuna trusted him to turn the king into a cursed object that would exist for a thousand years. When Gojo attacked Kenjaku right after escaping the prison realm, Sukuna even protected the body hopper from Gojo. And that's not something Sukuna would do for just anyone, right? Gojo mentioned that these two curse users probably took a binding vow before. It was also a huge surprise when it was revealed that in the past, Kanjaku had taken over Yuji's mom's body, Kaori Tadori. Kanjaku's goal in taking over Kaori was actually to create a vessel for Sukuna. Plus, Kanjaki knew that Sukuna's twin was reincarnated in Yuji's dad, Jin Tadori. Besides this, Kanjaku also inherited Kaori's out of this world curse technique. I mean literally from outer space because it's the anti-gravity system, which he used in his fight against Chozo and Yuki Sukumo. And lastly, the person they initially thought was Kenjaku's real identity was Norotoshi Kamo. I know it may sound confusing, but this isn't the narrow-eyed Kamo from Kyoto High. What I'm talking about is this Norotoshi Kamo. 
the Hitler looking or Charlie Chaplin. Let's go with Charlie Chaplin looking dude. Who was taken over by Kenjaku. I'm actually placing Kamo high up in the ranks because he was easily one of the smartest sorcerers. Even though his powers and abilities weren't fully shown, it was clear that he had a deep understanding of Jujutsu. Because of this, he was able to conduct experiments on fusing humans with cursed spirits, giving these specimens the innate ability of his own clan, blood manipulation. But due to their immortality, all records about him and his experiments were completely destroyed. And as a result, he went on to be known as the most evil Jujutsu sorcerer in history. Since Kanjaku's time, using Narutoshi Kamo's body wasn't disclosed. I decided to consider Kamo himself separately from Kanjaku. But I'm just thinking, was Norutoshi an evil sorcerer all along? Or was it Kanjaku who took over his body? And it's just that no one actually knew when Kanjaku transferred to Kamo's body. Regardless, he was so evil that even the very curses he created in his experiments hated this old man's guts. During the Meiji era, more than 150 years ago, Kamo aka Kanjaku created the cursed womb death paintings when he experimented on a woman who could give birth to a human spirit hybrid. And just so you know, that woman became pregnant and aborted nine freaking times. Like ain't that some Mr. Dr. Klein stuff. He mixed his blood with the cursed wombs, resulting in the special great cursed beings Chozo, Esso, and Kechitsu. Since Norotoshi is from the Kamo clan, the death paintings inherited the family's innate curse technique, blood manipulation. Chozo was so pissed at Kenjaku, who was posing as Norotoshi for doing these kinds of experiments on him and his brothers. That is why bro switched sides when he realized Yuji was actually his younger brother and that Kenjaku had screwed up his family. And you know, you shouldn't mess with family. During the Culling Games, probably the strongest sorcerer that Kenjaku incarnated was the Electro Hajime Kashimo. This guy had some unique curse energy. It had the properties of electricity, keeping his body constantly electrified. When Hajime powered up his attacks with his energy, they were almost impossible to defend against and zapped anything they hit. He controlled the charges precisely, sending lightning bolts at his targets. He didn't need a domain expansion for this to hit because it was so accurate. But he did need a cooldown after using it. His curse technique was called Mythic Beast Amber. With it, Kashimo's body could mimic the behavior of electricity. This technique made him super fast. By tapping into his brain's electrical signals, he could use electromagnetic waves to easily vaporize objects. But after using this power, he was done for. But I guess that didn't matter because Sukuna finished him off. There's also a sorcerer with a crazy technique who could even stand up to Gojo, my man Fumihiko Takaba, the best character in the series. This was shown during his meme battle with another special grade sorcerer, Sudo Geto, aka Kenjaku. Takaba's curse technique is called Comedian. When he thinks something is funny, it becomes real. Basically, Fumihiko can manipulate reality itself, which clearly makes him a special grade case. Kanjaku also explained that Takaba's technique went beyond just imagination. Even Kanjaku's mind was forced to react, which he called soul resonance. For Takaba, his battle against Kanjaku felt like a simulation, but in reality, the damage Kanjaku took was all real. However, Takaba has one weakness. His technique is linked to his self-confidence. If he starts doubting himself, especially his comedy, his power turns off and he becomes vulnerable. But ultimately, his passion for comedy allowed Yuta to catch Kanjaku off guard and kill him. If Takaba uses his comedy as a distraction, my guy kinda uses the unique visuals of his domain to throw off his target. The Tokyo High Dropout, recognized as the most powerful student, can also be considered a special great sorcerer, Kinji Hakari. If you remember, Gojo said that this third year student has the potential to surpass him one day. Yuta, a legit powerful special great, even claimed that Hakari can be stronger than him when his senpai is all worked up. That's because Hakari possesses an insane domain expansion, Idle Death Gamble, which can make him totally invincible. His crazy ability is actually one of the reasons why he got suspended. You know how the Jujutsu higher ups are kind of against modern types of Jujutsu? Just like Hakari's innate ability, Private Pure Love Train. This super unique pachinko themed ability is directly linked to his domain expansion, which basically works like a slot machine with a 1 out of 239 chance of hitting the jackpot. However, it's not always guaranteed, so he needs a bit of luck for it to work. But in chapter 189, it was said that Hakari has incredible luck, which is why his curse technique perfectly fits him. And when he lands a jackpot, he can activate unkillable mode, which lasts for the entire duration of the song Admiring You. Exactly 4 minutes and 11 seconds. During that time, he's literally immortal. Even though he has an unlocked reverse curse technique, the limitless curse energy produced during that period enables his body to automatically heal and even regenerate lost limbs. Well, all, actually all of these abilities could be useless if he weren't a strong fighter. He'd just keep on dying and his curse technique wouldn't even matter. But you see, he's also insanely strong in close combat and extremely fast. He even overpowered Charles Bernard, 
a cursed user who can slightly see into the target's future, and scored a huge W against another powerful and lightning fast cursed user, Hajime Kashimo. Now this dog didn't even need powerful techniques to achieve a lightning fast movement, because Bro literally maxed out all his stats. Even before Maki, the Zendines literally had a member, or should I say a monster, who was basically the glitch in the Matrix, Toji Fuchiguro. Technically, he was a non-sorcerer because of the heavenly restriction that basically suppressed his cursed energy. That's why we're giving this dog a special mention among the ranks of the special breeds. In exchange for his restriction, Toji became insanely powerful with his physical strength and speed. With his strength alone and a couple of cursed tools, he could easily destroy cursed spirits and even sorcerers, defeating even the untouchable Gojo Satoru in their first fight in chapter 71. Even in death, Bro was so powerful that the will of his body overcame the soul and physical body of his supposed vessel when he was summoned using Granny Ogami's abilities. Even Trash Dagon, a powerful special grade curse in Shibuya who easily dominated a team of elite sorcerers, Nanami, Naobito, Maki, and Megumi. But even though he was in the same league as the special grade sorcerers, well he might have been actually stronger at some point. He was not graded by the Jujutsu world simply because these douchebag conservatives have zero interest in those who didn't possess cursed energy like Toji. From being a normal high schooler, he was dragged into the Jujutsu world when Bro casually ate Tsukuna's finger, Yuji, the main man Itadori. Actually as a teenager, Yuji was blessed with immense strength. Like have you seen a high schooler who can lift and throw down a car? When he became a sorcerer, he already had the talent for fighting and now he even broke the record for consecutive black flash hits. But on top of that, when everybody thought he was just a freaking vessel for Sukuna, it was a major turnaround when Yuji's insane powers came to light after Sukuna transferred to Megami. Bro is more than a hybrid. Like for example, his incredible command over Black Flash was seen in Chapter 257, where almost all of his punches on Sukuna landed a Black Flash after he had been awakened. He also possesses a special ability where he can directly damage the soul. The special great sorcerer Mahito even said that Yuji's power can bypass his technique, making Yuji's punches strike right through the soul. Since he was a sibling of Chozo and ate his death painting bros, Yuji was also capable of blood manipulation. Yep, he can also use piercing blood. But since he hasn't fully grasped the extension technique, convergence, which is necessary to use piercing blood, he borrowed the blood orb created by Chozo so he could spam the blood laser attack. And my boy ain't finished yet with his list of cursed techniques. Since he was a former vessel of the King of Curses, he eventually learned about Sukuna's abilities engraved in his body. That's why he unlocked his own version of Shrine, where he can actually cut like Sukuna's slashing technique. The only difference is, Yuji has to be touching the target before he can apply the technique. Not only that, he can also use Dismantle to force Sukuna's soul to eject from Megami's body. He even made a binding vow to effectively target the boundary between the soul and the body to completely free his best bro from the king's control. Now after tapping into Sukuna's technique, he could even perform a domain expansion. But actually this was already foreshadowed when Malevolent Shrine was engraved on him from being Sukuna's vessel for so long. In the anime when Sukuna opened his domain, Yuji's reflection showed him performing the same move. Probably the sorcerer with the highest potential to become the goat, even surpassing his sensei, is none other than the cursed Rizzer, Yuta. What's interesting is that all of his insane abilities can actually be traced down to Yuta's even more insane ancestry. And believe it or not, he came not from just one, but two great families of sorcerers. The first one was when Gojo Sensei mentioned that they were distant relatives of the great Sugawara clan, one of the three vengeful spirits, and the other was the Fujiwara family, one of the strongest sorcerers of the Heian period. Basically Bro is uniquely special. No wonder he's Giga's favorite, huh? My boy has a crazy curse technique called Copy. After Rika, his clingy cursed GF, chows down on a body part of a sorcerer, Yuta's ability lets him use the sorcerer's curse techniques, literally like Kakashi's copy ability. When Yuta took over Gojo's body during chapter 261, he even looked like the sixth Okage. Actually, that's just one of the things that makes Yuta so terrifying. Can you imagine how powerful he is? He managed to learn Gojo's complex techniques, including the Hollow Purple and even Sensei's Domain Expansion, Unlimited Void, all in less than 5 minutes. Even though Gojo might have explained how his powers work, it's not the same until you actually use them yourself. It's like learning to drive, you know? You might know the basics in theory, but it's a whole different game when you're holding the wheel and the stick, right? That's just how much of a genius Yuta is. With his insane skills, he was able to defeat even the special great curses and the strongest sorcerers from the past who were summoned in the calling games, like the disgusting Roach, Dhruv, Takako, and Ryu. And Rika, she not only eats body parts to copy a curse technique, but she also stores them for Yuta. This overprotective GF also is an insane close combat fighter that supports Yuta. And when my boy activates his innate ability, 
he creates a five minute connection with Rika that allows him to use the copy techniques. On top of that, his insane domain expansion, authentic mutual love grants Utah the chance to use each of the copy techniques with a sure hit effect. The only catch is that the powers of these techniques are randomly placed in countless katanas throughout his domains. Even Yuta doesn't know which one is which until he draws a sword, and the katana disappears after the technique is activated. Besides his abilities as a sorcerer, he's also an expert swordsman and close combat fighter. Like is this guy not like capable of anything? Heck, he's even capable of reverse curse technique. With all these abilities, Yuta being a special great sorcerer is a no-brainer. But he probably wouldn't achieve all these things without the help of the one and only Gojo Satoru. Man, do we even need an introduction for this guy? I mean, it was said that when Gojo was born, he shook up the balance of the entire world. Gojo was easily the strongest sorcerer of the modern era with his insanely powerful curse technique, the Limitless. Paired with the six eyes, bro is, you know, untouchable. But that's not even his scariest ability. On top of his insane curse techniques, there's a simpler yet more terrifying skill he has mastered that makes him totally invincible. To maximize his abilities, he basically needs an unlimited supply of curse energy. And he actually achieved this by recharging his curse energy using reverse curse technique. He became the strongest after he went automatic mode with his infinity, creating a never-ending cycle of refilling his curse energy. With this, Gojo could easily spam his techniques like blue, which created a void-like effect that acted as an attractive force he often used in fights. When released at maximum output, he could destroy even the powerful merged beast Agito. Then there was Curse Reversal, Red, which worked as the opposite of Blue, but with even more destructive power. Like he casually one-shot a massive Curse Spirit during the Night Parade of the Hundred Demons. But the most powerful among these techniques was the Hollow Purple. Gojo said that even in their clan, it was only known to a few. It was basically a combo of Red and Blue that was so powerful it could easily wipe out anything in its path. And on top of all these insane techniques was his domain expansion, Unlimited Void, which was basically an end game for anyone who clashes with him. No one could face Gojo's might. Even the Jujutsu Society didn't mess with him. And the most powerful curses ran for their lives at the mere sight of him. Well, that was until Sukuna's powerhouse team with Mahoraga and Agito of the Ten Shadows beat Sensei. During the fight, Gojo reached the limit of his brain after non-stop spamming his domain expansion, consuming a massive amount of curse energy and eventually damaging his brain since he repeatedly refilled his curse technique. Ultimately, he was defeated when Sukuna bypassed Gojo's Limitless using Mahoraga's adaptability. Their fight was a total nerve-wracking battle. If Gojo is the strongest in the modern era, then Ryomin Sukuna, aka the King of Curses, was undoubtedly the number one sorcerer ever to exist in history. It's actually pretty insane considering he existed in the Heian period, which was famously known as the Golden Age of Sorcerers. Yet no one could match the strength of the King of Curses. He was so powerful that he easily wiped out even the strongest armies of the most powerful clans with his cursed tools, Kamutoke and Hiten. In his true form, Sukuna is a jacked, four-armed, four-eyed beast capable of insane combat abilities. That's not all. Thanks to his doubled number of arms and mouths, he can chant and amplify his powerful techniques, cleave and dismantle, even during close combat. But do you know how Sukuna went from being a mortal human to a cursed object that has survived for over a thousand years? It was actually Kunjaku who transformed him into a 20-finger special grade cursed object. Sukuna probably got bored of all the sorcerers in the past, which is why he turned himself into a cursed object and lived through the years, waiting for a vessel that could hold the powers of the cursed fingers, like our MC, Yuji. And you know how strong Sukuna is, I mean, he took down the OP Shikigami Mahoraga, something neither the Zenin clan nor the Goju clan has ever been able to achieve. Plus in his fight against Jogo, Sukuna totally overpowered him by using Jogo's specialty against him, unleashing the fiery technique. Fuga. This surprise technique is actually from Sukuna's Divine Flame. After opening his domain, Malevolent Shrine, and using the techniques Dismantle and Cleave, Sukuna can cast the Divine Flame and instantly turn all things in his domain to ashes. Ever since he took over Yuji's, then Megumi's body, he's been trashing everyone like they're goddamn insects. Remember when Sukuna summoned Nue? Compared to Megumi's Nue, the King Shikigami's was the size of a building. That's just how massive the difference in their powers is. Like, bro, it's almost as if the series should be called Sukuna Kaizen already. And you know why he's insanely strong, right? It's possible he might have been a member of a very powerful family, the Abe clan, 